Okay, so today we are going to be graphing two different forms of parabolas. Now, way back in Algebra 1, you would have graphed parabolas, had a whole unit on quadratics, and you would have graphed them. So the first thing you should notice is that these equations are really different than what you graphed in Algebra 1. Okay, so these are along the same lines as the circles that we did before this really long weekend. Um, and the other things that we're going to be doing in conics, right, they're all written in a very specific way. Okay, and they all have H and K in them. It's very similar to vertex form uh, that you did again back in Algebra 1, but we have, again, specific ways that we write these, and the equations actually give us very specific information. So what I want you to do is I do want you to copy down um, both sets of equations because I do want you to be able to kind of compare them and see the similarities and differences and how it affects how it's graphed. Okay, so the one on the left, the vertical, is that same parabola that you've been graphing again since algebra one. It basically opens up and down. That's why it's called vertical. Okay, the other one, notice that now the y is squared. Okay, so this thing is going to be opening up left and right horizontally. Okay, notice um, it doesn't matter that the y is squared or the x is squared, your vertex is still h and k. So that's something that you need to look out for when you're in horizontal form. Don't mess up and put the k first just because it happens to be in the front of the equation, right? It's still h and k, and you still have to change the signs. That's kind of, you know, one of the big things on these is that notice there's a minus in the equation, right? So you always have to change the signs to get your vertex. All right, so the vertex is always h and k. And by the way, this is going to go quick because I want it to be a short video. Go ahead and pause as many times as you need to. Go back and replay it. It's fine. I just want you to copy specifically this down to make sure you've got the different pieces. Okay, your axis of symmetry. Again, something that you did back in Algebra 1 or should have. Um, for your vertical one, it was just x equals whatever the h was from the vertex. Okay, it was a line that went up and down in the middle of the graph, split it in half, and made it symmetrical. For the horizontal one, it's the same deal, only now your line is horizontal. So it's y equals k from your parabola, or from your uh, vertex, rather. Okay, so that's just basically the formula for it. All right, so we have two new things that you'll be graphing with your parabolas, because you've done vertex and axis of symmetry again since algebra one. We have a line that is called the directrix, okay? And it is found, again, on the vertical one, because it's a line that goes like up underneath or behind the vertex. You have y equals the k from your vertex right there, and then plus or minus p, okay? That is the new thing that's in here. Um, notice in both equations, you have this for p. Okay, and that is four times whatever p is. So in order to actually pick out what p is in your equation, you have to divide by four, you know, whatever is there with the numbers. Um, and this p actually determines if the graph, because if it's vertical, it could open up or down, right? And if it's horizontal, it could open right or left. Okay, and that p being positive or negative tells you which way it opens, right? So if p is positive, it's going to open up, and if p is negative, it'll open down if it's vertical. And if it's horizontal, if p is positive, it'll open to the right towards those positive, you know, values. And if it opens, or if p is negative, it'll open to the left, okay? And that's the reason that we have um, plus or minus p here, because that's one of the big things that we're going to have to be able to pick out from the equation is which way does the graph open, right, so that we know which way to draw it. So that's why there is that plus or minus, because it takes into account whether it's opening um, up or down, left or right, as far as for the, um, the horizontal. Okay, so again, copy this down. It'll make a little bit more sense once we actually go through an equation when we pick out everything. All right, and the last thing that we have is called the focus. Um, the focus point is actually inside the curve. Okay, and again, for the vertical, notice the focus point is, is lined up basically with the, um, the vertex, right? It's going up and down from the vertex, and the horizontal is going left and right because H is your X value, 
right free vertex, that's the thing that moves left and right. And again, it's got that plus or minus because we don't know if it's which way it's opening. So it depends on if the p-value is positive or negative. Again, this will make more sense when we actually go through something with numbers and actually pick out all the pieces. And again, pause however many times you like, replay it if you need to, just make sure that this part gets copied. This is all your formulas that you're going to need for parabolas. Okay, so let's actually go ahead and graph one. Uh, just a quick note, again, you don't have to copy this down, it's fine. I just want you to understand that you are not making an XY chart. You are going to graph the vertex, the focus, you're going to draw the line for the direct direction, the line for the axis of symmetry, and that's it. That's all you have to do. And then we're just going to draw a rough sketch of what it should look like based on that information. Okay. So anytime you are given these for the parabolas, you have to pick out H, K, and P and figure out which way the parabola is open so that you know where your points are going. Okay. And I already stated this. 4P is always in front of the non-squared term, period. Okay, it's never written over here with a squared term. So 4P is always written with a non-squared term, and you always have to divide it by 4 to solve it. You're solving the equation 4P equals whatever that number is there. So P equals, okay, and P is basically going to be a distance, and we're going to get into that more tomorrow when I'm back, when we actually start writing the equations, and we'll go over, like, some, some specific vocabulary for it. Okay, so we're going to pick out H, K, and P. All right, here's our equation. Okay, H and K, so H is always with the X, K is always with the Y. So H and K is negative 6, 1. All right, that's your vertex. And P, again, we're dividing 4P equals 4, so we're going to divide by 4P equals 1. Okay, so this is a positive value, right? And notice that the Y is squared. So if you go back to that, Y squared, meaning this graph opens horizontally left or right, and the P value is positive. Okay, so that tells us, again, Y squared, P positive. I know my graph opens to the right. Okay, and we're going to draw a rough sketch after we draw the four items or the graph the four items that we have to graph. All right, so we're going to go ahead and graph this one. And again, we've already picked out, just as a reminder, H and K is your vertex, and that's going to be negative 6, 1. Okay, and P is 1. And P is basically a distance. If you go back to those formulas that you wrote down, right? Okay, so your Axis to symmetry is the easy one, right? Because we know it's horizontal. So if axis to symmetry is y equals the k value from your vertex, all right? And the directrix, again, go back. Horizontal, directrix, x equals h plus or minus p. And again, the plus or minus comes from is it positive or negative? Okay, so x equals h, negative 6, and we're either going to add or subtract the 1, p is 1, depending on which way it's going. If it's positive, you're obviously going to add it. So that means my directrix is x equals negative 5. Wait, let me think. Nope. Nope, sorry, subtract. My apologies. Having a moment. So negative seven. I'll show you how this works. All right, so your vertex is one, two, three, four, five, six, negative six, one. All right, the axis of symmetry is going to go through that just like normal. Okay, if I know for a fact the graph opens to the right, the directrix is behind it, so the directrix is negative seven. That's my directrix, and this is my axis of symmetry. Okay, and that means my focus is on the right side. It's opening this way to the right, and my focus point has to be inside the graph. 
right? So there's the vertex, there's the directrix, there's the axis of symmetry, the focus point. Okay, so again, the formula for the focus is H plus or minus P comma K. All right, so we are going to take the X value or the H value of the vertex. So it's negative six. And I need to move one to the right because P is one, so plus one, and then the K stays the same. So that's going to be negative five, one. And that is the point of my focus. And again, this might make a little bit more sense also tomorrow after we start talking about the different um, vocabulary. Um, but I wanted you to be able to graph these today. So again, vertex in the middle, okay, focus to the right because the graph opens to the right and the focus always has to be inside the curve and the directrix also always has to be behind or, or behind, yeah, basically in back up or underneath the curve. Okay, we're going to draw a basic sketch. That's it. That's what the graph is supposed to look like. Again, directrix behind it, axis of symmetry going through it, vertex where the vertex would normally be for um, a quadratic, and then the focus um, inside the curve. And notice the distance between this vertex and the focus, and the vertex and the directrix is your p-value. It's one square away. So whatever that p-value is, it tells you how much you're moving away from your vertex. Okay, and it's going to be in both directions, left, right, or up and down if the parabola is vertical. All right, so it's just that one, you know, one step away. There's your P. We need to figure out which way it's opening. It's kind of the important part about this. All right, so let's try a vertical one. Let's just see how we go. So H is negative 2. K is positive one, and again, pause this, it's fine, and then fill in what you think, and then go back to the answers, it works. Okay, in this case, P is positive two, just to remind myself. So I know it's vertical because X is squared, it's vertical, and P is positive means it's opening up. Okay, so it gives me a hint as far as when I'm writing um, or drawing the, the graph. All right, so the vertex is negative two, one, Okay, so I'm not going to fill in those yet. So that means my axis of symmetry, since it's going up and down, has to be x equals negative 2. Go ahead and draw that in. Okay, since it's opening up, my directrix needs to be two squares down from my vertex. Right, so it's affected just the up and down. So it's going to be y equals, there's that k, 1, and then I'm going to subtract the 2. I'm going to go 2 squares down. So y equals negative 1 is my directrix because the graph has to open up. Okay, so that means my focus, again, p is 2, is 2 points up from my vertex. So that's going to be negative 2, and then I'm going to have the 1 plus 2. So that point is negative 2, 3. Two, three. Okay, so that's what I should see on your paper when you're done, is I should see the vertex, the focus, the directrix, the axis of symmetry, and then just a rough sketch. Okay, and do you have to use the formulas? No. If you know which way the graph is going, like if you know that this is an x squared and a p positive, this was going up, you can graph your vertex and then just do your p. Okay, two points up from the vertex, two points down. The one that's outside the curve has to be the directrix. The one that's inside the curve has to be the focus point. Again, yeah, and it will get a little bit easier as we practice, I promise. All right, so another, again, vertical because x is squared. Um, okay, so if there's no parentheses, that means in this case that 4p equals 1, which means your p is going to be equal 1 fourth or 0 0.25. I don't care which one you use, it's fine. Okay, and then 
h is 3 and k is negative 10. All right, so I know that, again, this is squared and p is positive. So this is what my graph should look like when I'm done. So vertex, 3, negative 10. All right, and this time I'll go straight down. So since this thing has to be pointing up, that means the focus, right, it has to be going up from the vertex. It has to be inside that curve. So that means I'm going to add 1 fourth to negative 10. So my focus should be 3, and then either negative 9 and 3 fourths, or negative 9.75, again, if you're using the decimal. It doesn't matter which way. Okay, and again, because it's going up, I know it has to look like this. That's going to be my finished product as far as drawing it. All right, so my focus has to be above the vertex. My directrix has to be below. So it has to be one-fourth, that p-value, below my vertex. So my directrix is, y, is going to be y equals either negative 10 and one-fourth or negative 10.25. Again, I don't care if you're using decimals or fractions at this point. And my axis of symmetry is just normal. It's just x equals 3 that same part of the vertex. So 3, negative 10. And I'm not going to be picky as far as exact. If you get p-values that, that are, um, I don't want to call it, p-values that are very, very small, I'm not going to, you know, fuss at you. It does not have to be an exact thing. Okay, there's the axis of symmetry. We're going to call this the directrix just because it is so very small. And then again, we're going to draw our basic graph. All right, so let's do one more that's horizontal, and then I will let you get started. There we go. All right, so again, y is squared, and p is going to be negative this time. See the negative in front of it. So if y is squared and p is negative, that means my graph is going to face like that. It has to face to the left toward those negative numbers. All right, so let's pick out all our information. H is still over here with X. Remember I said don't get it messed up and put your Y first. It's always the X. So H is 6, K is 4, and P is negative 1. Okay, so your vertex is 6, 4. All right, and your p-value is negative 1. That's still technically 1 square. It just means that your graph is going to face the negative numbers. So if I have to go 1 square to the left and to the right of my vertex. Well, if it's facing the left, I know my focus has got to be inside the curve. So I have to go 1 to the left of my vertex. So that is going to be 6 minus 1, 4. So that's 5, 4. That's where my vertex, or my focus rather, has to be. One square to the left of my vertex in order to be inside the curve. All right, so the directrix has to be x equals 1 more than my vertex. So 6 plus 1. Okay, so there's my directrix. And then my axis of symmetry, the normal y equals 4. Just has to go through the vertex and the focus. And then again, draw the basic curve. So P is basically a distance value. It tells you how far to go from your vertex, left, right, up, or down. Um, like I said, I just expect you to be able to draw a basic graph. I should just see on your graph both lines, the directrix and the axis of symmetry, and both points to go with your curve and make sure you're drawing your curve in the correct direction. All right, I will see y'all tomorrow. Have a good one.